Hi everyone. You may have noticed that I'm having a bit of a lazy day today. I haven't done the full makeup. I've been out this morning for tea and cake with little sis. Um, and I just decided to, to lay off it. I really couldn't be bothered today, I have to be honest. You may notice that the streak has changed colour. I've been purple for nigh on three years time for a change and uh, decided to go blue or back to blue, I should say. So life has been slightly busy since I spoke to you last, which was the day before Comic Con. Yes, we went to Comic Con and yes, there was an increased police presence. There were authorised firearms officers there, but unless you knew what to look for, which we do, you probably wouldn't have noticed them. They kind of kept in the background. It was quite subtle. There were sniffer dogs at every entrance, which I personally found quite reassuring um, to see them there. There was a slightly more in-depth baggage search, um, but as you'll see from this little clip, people took it very much in their stride. Um, didn't seem to be any real problems. There were the usual crowds there, as you can see from this little clip. All in all, everybody got in in pretty much the same amount of time as they would normally do. We were there just before 11 and we got into the main atrium area at about quarter to past, 20 past, so it didn't take that much longer than it would have done normally. We had a good mooch round. Um, we were looking for a couple of figurines um, and we never managed to see them. We were after a Batman bust and two Assassin's Creed figurines, but they weren't there, so... We didn't spend an awful lot of money. I replaced my Assassin's Creed pin because my old one was turned into a charm to go on Mashiach's collar. Hubby bought himself a new Batman key ring because his old one is now hanging on the key in the bathroom door. But that was about it. There were some fun things to see um, and I've got a few pictures for you here. About lunchtime we went outside to meet up with some of the other members of the Assassin's Cosplay Brotherhood and as you'll see from this little clip it was rather busy out there and so hot, so very hot. I did feel rather sorry for our Grandmaster Altair who was swathed in his robes. The poor lad must have been roasting. So the following week being half term, I wasn't a dancing, so I was hoping to make the most of my extra time by doing some bits and pieces around the house. That was not to be, as I was asked to do overtime at the surgery that I work in, which is very nice, of course, the extra money is always helpful, um, but it did mean that some of the projects that I had planned didn't get done. One little thing did, however, get done, and that was my new makeup cabinet to take to camp. And I will have a separate video for that going up very soon. On the Friday, we were going down to Temple Coombe for their medieval pageant, and we were hopeless, absolutely hopeless. We normally pack up the day before if we can, but hubby had to work. So Friday morning we got up having to pack everything into the van before we could go. And we just faffed. I have no idea what we did. Before you know it was half past ten and we were supposed to have picked up Adopted Son by then. But eh, we finally got on the road about quarter to twelve, which is frankly pants. And uh, set off on our journey down to Templecombe. 
which took us six and a half hours. Every road was a car park, which was utterly ridiculous because it was the last Friday of half term. I would have understood it had it been the Friday before half term and everyone was trotted off on half term holiday. But no, I didn't get that at all. Anywho, we got down there. There wasn't enough space in the living history area for us to put our tents and our fire warning up. So they put us in Traders Row, which was slightly peculiar. And some people did get a little bit confused thinking that the swords on the displays were actually for sale. No, they are ours. They belong to us. You can't have them. The site itself is beautiful. It is set up specifically for the medieval fair. Um, the battlefield has got ramparts with a palisade and a drawbridge and it all gets sort of wrecked at the end of the battle. There is a purpose-built beer barn, which is very nice for those people to go and have a drink. There are toilet facilities there. There is a cafe, restaurant type thing there all the time. It's a really, really lovely site. And it's a really chilled out kind of festival. The problem is there is a fine line between chilled out and boring. Um, and that line was crossed because there just wasn't that much in the way of public. Um, we are used to being on our feet and talking to people most of the day. And that's why we had been invited. The organisers know what we have and know what we do. Or they've seen our camp set up before. We're very keen to have us. But there just was not that much in terms of public traffic. Um, so we hardly spoke to anybody, which is most unusual and kind of not really what we do this for. Um, it was a long way to go. It was a lot of hard work. And in some ways, you'll excuse me because this sounds so pretentious, but in some ways it was a bit of a waste of what we do. We took all our stuff down. We set our display up for no one, but a bunch of other reenactors who not really that bothered anyway. So it was a, a kind of, you know, odd weekend. Um, my dad came to visit us on the Sunday, which was cool because then it kind of gave me something to do. I could chat to my dad, but I'm not sure that that's one we will be visiting again. Um, yeah, um, no, I don't think we'll be going to that one again. Maybe things might be different next year. They may have some more advertising or they may be a bit more proactive about getting people through the gates. But if things don't change, I don't think we will be revisiting. Tomorrow night we're going into London. We're going to see Saucy Jack and the Space Fixins, which is always a hoot. If you've never seen it, but you are you like your kind of kitschy musical, rocky horror type things, check it out. It's Charlie's Angels meets Buck Rogers in the 25th century in a disco. It's cheesy. It's as camp as hell. It's a great fun night out. Day after that, it's the alternative bring and buy sale, their summer sale, so I shall be going up there shopping like I really need to be shopping at this point. Since I've lost the weight I have, I now have wardrobes full of clothes that don't fit me anymore and I keep telling myself that I will get round to altering them, but I don't actually think that's going to happen. So when I finish here, I will be having a sort out. I've already got two huge piles to go to the charity shop and a whole bunch of things that will be going on eBay because they are now surplus to requirements. So that is my mission for this evening. I may well um, take you with me to Saucy Jack and the Space Vixens or give you an outfit of the night if nothing else and you can have a giggle at my expense. Given that we were away and the phone signal and Wi-Fi signal was pretty much non-existent in the middle of the field, um, we got home from Templecombe to the news that there had been another terrorist attack, this time on London Bridge. And in the last couple of days we have seen the horror unfolding that was the Grenfell Tower fire. 
uh, which kind of makes everything that I've just said rather um, petty and frivolous really but these things serve to remind us that you have to live your life to the full while you can because you simply never know what is going to happen once again these two incidents have shown the resilience of the British people and the sense of community that is clearly evident in situations like these. I often hear people saying that uh, communities are dying, that sort of sense of community is dying and then these tragedies occur and we see that that isn't actually true. Stories of bravery, immense bravery in the uh, terrorist attack, members of the public trying to help other members of the public. Um, a very typically kind of British attitude, one chap who ran out of the bar to get away from the attackers went back the next day to pay his bill. I mean, how frightfully British is that? Um, lots of stories from the Grenfell Tower incident of people opening their doors to strangers, strangers who had lost everything in that fire and and were suddenly being welcomed into other people's homes, being offered somewhere to stay. Um, members of the community and further afield giving food and water and clothing and toys and bedding and heaven only knows what to help those who had been left in desperate, desperate need. My heart goes out to all of those people who were affected and I feel particularly for those people who witnessed those events because that is not something you're going to get over very quickly. Um, inquiries will take place, committees will meet, uh, legislation may be passed, um, but at the end of the day life will continue for most of us as normal and for those who witnessed those events their lives will never be the same again um, and for what little it may be worth I'm just sending so much love and positive energy to those people in the hope that they will be able to recover from this ordeal, recover from their traumas and live a fruitful and happy life after this. So until I see you again, don't put off until tomorrow those things that you could be doing today. Don't wait for the rainy day that might never happen. Don't wait to live your life because you just never know what is going to happen tomorrow. I send all of you much love, light and many blessings and until the next time, take care. Bye bye.